Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take a big topic and we break it up in all these different angles so that we all understand it a little bit better. And this week, we're talking about language. The first spoken and written languages, effects about being bilingual and what that does to your brain. We're also gonna talk about made up languages and what happens if we ever get beyond language. But first, we're gonna need to get to the basics. So let's talk a little bit about what language even is. One of my favorite authors is Jack Vance. He has this mastery of the English language. I would read his books and I would learn words while reading them and have to go look them up because I was reading them on an actual book. I couldn't just like tap it and say define. And here's a quote about language from one of his books that I thought would be a great way to start this episode. For $20, I phrase the answer in clear and actionable language. For 10, I use the language of Kant, which occasionally admits of ambiguity. For five, I speak a parable, which you must interpret as you will. And for one dollar, I babble in an unknown tongue. Think about that. He's basically saying, if you pay me more money, I will speak your language. Otherwise, I get to choose my own. And we do this even in real life. We speak different languages to different people all the time, and we accept and put out language as needed. Usually we divide languages into two different groups, right? Formal and informal. If you're talking to your professor, you're talking to your best friend. That's how we're taught foreign languages here in the US, especially, you know, you use usted for professors, you use tu for your friends, and there are lots of different types of language outside of these two boxes of formal and informal. For example, there are different ways to define groups of language. Dialects are ways of speaking based on geographical or social factors. Whereas lingo is a speech of a particular community or group. And jargon is similar to lingo, but with a more specific edge. So if you were talking about business or athletics or science, you would do it with jargon. And the reason you would do that is so that it's more specific and more clear and everyone understands what you're talking about. But there's also things like Kant, which was just mentioned in the Jack Vance quote, or Argot, which is like jargon, but without the specificity. And in fact, it's more to exclude other people than it is to include and be more clear. There's also things like Creole, Pidgin, Patois. These are languages that are mixes of various other groups so that everyone could communicate together. All these are different ways to describe language. But language is really about communicating your thoughts and getting your ideas across. And doing that in ancient man, you had to learn to speak or to gesture. And the first spoken language, unfortunately, is pretty much impossible to determine because it evolved over time. There was no one there to record it. No one wrote down who spoke first because we hadn't invented writing yet. In 3200 BC, there were lots of different spoken languages, and other than Sumerian and Egyptian, which were some that we actually did start writing down. But writing isn't the end all be all of language. Ptolemy wrote of the Albanian people in the first century BC, and they had linguistic and archeological evidence that suggested that they were way older than the first century BC. And in fact, the Albanian language wasn't even written down until about the 15th century BCE or AD, if you prefer. So just because you didn't write it down doesn't mean it's not a language. But the first written language was Sumerian. We know this because it was actually written down for the first time. It's the oldest written language in existence and it is considered a language isolate, which is a natural language with no relationship to any other language. For example, Latin and Spanish and Italian, they all have similar root languages or, or they all have similar languages that are together. And so they wouldn't be an isolate. The first clear evidence of Sumerian was in 3100 BC in southern Mesopotamia. And it flourished during about the third millennium of BC and about 2000 BC, it was replaced by a Semitic Akkadian, which was a spoken language and then that survived. And then Sumerian continued to be used, but it was more ceremonial, not unlike Latin. And then it became a scientific language in Mesopotamia until the first century AD, until it was completely forgotten. Until the 19th century, when inscriptions on excavated tablets were discovered, and they were like, wow, this is the oldest language we've ever found. That's pretty cool. But let's get back to modern day though. So today we associate a lot of our languages with accents and dialects. Dialects are based on locations, they're based on race or class, gender or age, and any number of other factors that can affect pronunciation of common words or vocabulary or syntax. Over time, 
you have kind of a formula that formulates dialects and accents. First, you'd have slang with your friends. You make up a new word, or you and your friends start using this word, and then that gains social prestige. Over time, that social prestige spreads, and you end up having other people start to use that language with you, and that's a regional code. Then regional pride spreads that even further, and it becomes pop culture. And then everyone speaks this. And even though it is a dialect and accent, it might be, you know, lingo, it could even be cant or argot. But what it is essentially is a, a new pop culture meme. There's also then code switching, which is when you're speaking two different languages, but you're doing it at the same time to kind of make sure everybody understands what you're saying. So when I'm here talking to you, I could have my mom here and I'm talking to you in my normal trace accent, and then I talk to my mom in her Michigan accent, and I want to say pop to her and soda to you, and I'm code switching all the time to make sure that everyone feels included. And it's weird, but it's a pretty cool thing that happens in language, especially in people who speak more than one. Uh, how I Met Your Mother calls it revertigo, you know, when you revert to how you were in a certain time of your life when you're with people who remind you of that time. It's pretty cool. There's also sign language, which many of you may have already noticed we hadn't mentioned. I did sort of briefly mention it in kind of a gesture-based languages prior probably to verbal language. Many of uh, ancient people would gesture at each other. And today, people use these same systems, but a much more specific way to communicate similarly to verbal or written communication. And this is a complete actual visual language, but it's related to the language of the verbal community. So American Sign Language is not the same as sign languages around the world. Japanese Sign Language, for example, is completely different than American Sign Language. So we're not going to get too much into sign language, although it is super cool. And if you speak sign language, good on you. It's really awesome. So because languages kind of bloom out of root languages and then end up merging together over time through pop culture and slang and all of these different ways that we end up using language out here in the real world, we end up with things like cognates, which are words that sound alike and they have similar meaning and also usually come from the same root word. So, for example, we call that sweet powdery stuff sugar and Germans call it zucker and Hungarians call it kuker. And it all kind of comes from the same root feeling or the same root word. Then there are false cognates, which sound like they come from the same word, but they actually don't. It's just a coincidence. Like in Japanese, name means name, but they didn't come from the same root. Or buya means boy, but it's not actually the same root word at all. There are also things like false friends, which are two words in two different languages or letters in two different alphabets that look or sound similar, but they're very different in their meaning. So ropa in Spanish, does not mean rope, it means clothes. Anyway, languages are interesting because they evolve constantly. One of my favorite parts about it is that we don't know the first verbal language, but we're still using verbal languages that in some cases, some of our words are ancient. But what is your native language? Why don't you tell me down in the comments? And tomorrow, come back to Test2 Plus and find out how learning a language can actually make your brain better. It's pretty cool. You can also check out our other episodes if you haven't already. We did a whole thing last week where we got about weather and climate change and we thought it was gonna be kind of a crazy topic and it turned out to be a really crazy topic. So make sure you go watch those while you're waiting for tomorrow's episode. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes of Test 2 Plus. We are here every single day learning new stuff. This is episode one of five on language, so we will see you tomorrow.